Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? Alex with you here again. Thank you for dropping by. Thank you for tuning in. If you are hearing something different about my voice, that it's a little bit nasally, just because I've been sick for probably what um, maybe two weeks now. <laughs> it's been it's been kind of tough. Everybody's been sick in my family. It seems like we get sick, then we get better, then we get sick again, and it's just all day. And and then people at work are like, yeah, you probably have allergies, which I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Anyways, the very first thing I want to show you guys is um, we've had some guests over. Maybe that's why I got sick, but we had some guests over uh, these past couple of weeks, and I had to redo my office a little bit and just wanted to show you guys. I guess if you ask my wife, this room here isn't necessarily my office. It's sort of shared, but... I was able to, without too much argument, kind of uh, fashion the room a little bit kind of my own way. We had to set up these little curtain blinds for when the guests were here. I really wish that there was an actual like door here in the door frame, but I, I don't think it was like designed for that. Um, and I'm not really sure if I want to take the curtain off just yet. You can close this curtain completely like this um, and sort of you know create a little bit of privacy well i i think i did it a little too far but you can create a little bit of privacy and therefore if if that's necessary and then if we go in here i got my picture here um this is a good spot just because it's sort of like right in between the windows and it's i feel like it's just the right size and then i i got a permanent chest setup which is really cool i got this table from my mom she was gonna think she was gonna throw it away and uh, I got a couple of chairs here. Um, what you see as far as the chess set here. This is that $40 chess board that I shown you guys in one of my uh, recent videos. Mm, it's non-folding chess board. It's pretty thick. It's got that uh, felt on the bottom. Really nice. Nice quality board overall. I, I, I like it. It's a 2.25 square board and it's i feel like it's just the right size for this table i, I kind of wish the table was just a little bit bigger because as you notice you can't really put pieces so so i played a couple of games with my buddy just the other day and we had to put the pieces like on the floor um but I, if the table was just a little bit bigger it would have been nicer but it seems like the setup is working working just fine because i don't have to put the pieces up or anything which is really cool the chess uh, pieces that you see here are the uh, the cook chess set. It's one of my kind of go-to chess chess sets, and uh, and I sort of made the decision to just sort of leave it out, and uh, that way, you know, if anybody comes over and wants to play a game, I don't have to set anything up. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, these two chairs, I'm not super like excited about them, but I think that they they're still pretty pretty good here. There's like a little vent over there. Um, I'm always hot, and the vent when it blows AC, like cold air, I like to sit on this side preferably, just because I, you get that extra little bit of ventilation. And then there's not much furnished in this room just yet. I have these cool um, astronomy binoculars that I got for my birthday from from my wife's uh, from my wife's dad from my father-in-law. It's the Orion 9 by 63. It's really, really cool. And part of the reason why I, because we had some some decisions that we wanted to make. He wanted to get me a gift, and and then we decided on getting the binoculars. But the binoculars are really cool because um, I can share that experience with my kids, and that gives me a great joy. I would be able to set it up and and at least look at the moon, and the kids get really, really excited. So 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 that's that's really exciting. Um, got my little tripod over there that I use from time to time. Take with me to like the parks and everything. Got a little light in the in the corner at night. It's it's hard because it doesn't illuminate the room enough for you to play chess well here. But um, I was thinking about getting the same type of light over on the other side, but I'm not sure yet. Anyways, this this room is still sort of in transition. There's my folding board, the walnut, the walnut board from I think what is it um. House of Staunton. It's um, you guys have seen this before many times. It's a nice kind of uh, carry with you type of board. In fact, I was kind of deciding whether or not to use this board here, or use that one. And I sort of decided on that one for now. So it just, I don't know. I I used both, and and this one is the one I settled on for for the time being. I might change things up. And then I got a bunch of chairs for no particular reason. Um, 
in my table over there. Well, this table, I actually got that big computer down there under the table just for my dad just recently. So I'm not a Windows guy, I usually use Mac. So, and just a bunch of extra stuff here. A bunch of extra stuff. Anyways, that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys as far as my little office. Everybody has a little different setup, but I just wanted to mainly show you guys this. This little permanent sort of, or at least for the time being, little chest setup. So the reason why I really wanted to make this video, even though I'm sick, and I've been thinking about these ideas, and I, you guys know that in some of my videos, I like to ramble on about random stuff. So hopefully today I won't take too much of your time, but wanted to start off with the preface by saying that, you know, in, in this uncertain times that we live in, filled with conflict and just so much uncertainty, it, it's even more important now to find ways to preserve your mental health, okay? And how do we do that? Like, I thought about it, and I thought about it for a while, and I wanted to kind of present it in a condensed form today, so you guys hopefully are not like, where in the world is he going with this? But how do we go about trying to preserve our mental health, and, and what are some of the deficiencies and some of the some of the habits that I notice that that basically prevent us from doing so. So let's start off and just say that I feel like there's some some fundamental pillars to overall maintaining your mental health. And of course, we all know that these um, these pillars, so to speak, one would be obviously getting adequate sleep, which is I'm going to say outright, I don't get good adequate sleep. I go to sleep at like midnight or past midnight. I wake up at 6, 6.30. I, I really don't get enough sleep. I wake up at night because the kids wake up at night. So I used to get probably good seven and a half to eight and a half hours of sleep every night. And then when, when we started having kids, that kind of went out the window and my average is probably like five and a half hours now and I'd be happy to get five and a half hours. But uh, adequate sleep is just like so important. People tell you this uh, time and time again everywhere you hear that but I feel like hear it from me, adequate sleep is just so important. Second in my opinion most important thing would be obviously uh, proper nutrition. Um, that means that you need to take in uh, the right amount of calories. You need to also think about what are you getting with those calories because uh, n not that many people are really aware of how food uh, will affect them. But all I have to say about that topic, and I'm not a dietitian or anything like that, but um, the calories that you put into your body uh, have to be balanced against what you're getting out of those calories. And what exactly do I mean that? Well... Uh, let me give you a, a quick example. Let's say you're eating a pastry or some kind of a sweet dessert or something. And let's say it has like 200 calories in it. Um, you know, that's kind of a small number, but whatever. What are you getting out as far as minerals, uh, vitamins, protein? What are the macros? Like, are you getting enough out of those 200 calories? Because you put in 200 calories in your body, that's energy, that's a potential for you know, whatever it is, if, you, if you're watching your weight, that's an extra 200 cal calories you could go without. But what exactly are you getting in return? Let's say, for example, I'm eating uh, a handful of almonds or other uh, nuts. That's a different profile. You know, I'm getting the same 200 calories, but I might, might be getting magnesium. I might be getting a lot of different minerals. I'm getting fiber, a lot of fiber. I'm getting protein. So you're getting back for the calories that you've ingested. The calories are, are sort of the fine that you pay. And then what do you get back in return? That's that's the most important thing. That's all I have to say about, about foods. Um, I try to fo eat foods that are kind of a less inflammatory because when I do my exercises that I do daily, I really, um, I. If I eat a lot of pro-inflammatory foods, then I'll start getting a lot of like inflammation in my knees, inflammation in my back, my back start might start acting out. So I try to stay like, I, I stick to foods that, that are not likely to cause the pro-inflammatory response. And then the third pillar, and this one is gonna be the most important, basically the, the substance of what I'm gonna be talking about in this video is the, the process of trying to adopt a more mindful um, way of looking at the world, a more mindful approach to dealing with the world. 
I mean, think about it. Um, in today's busy and uncertain world, there's, a, there's an overabundance of stimuli to which your brain can hook on to. Unless you live in the middle of nowhere and you don't have TV and you don't have internet, then uh, most of the rest of us are presented with an overabundance of stimuli. You can watch TV, you can play video games, you can watch the news or read the news. You basically can create the world around you that might seem busy and exciting, but that can really take a toll on, on your body. I mean, think about the fact that, for example, how is an average day looking for you? Like, think about that for a minute. What are the type of things that are usually present in an average type of day? For me, it's like, okay, well, I have to wake up and I have to get to work. And at work, you know, I might check in on the recent news. Now, the recent news is a big dilemma because I'm checking online, for example, and there's a bunch of these stuff that's coming up. And when you click, for example, like, I don't know, Washington Post or something, you saw a, a headline that was concerning to you. So all of a sudden, you know, like, oh my God, you know, um, this is really, really concerning. But then as soon as you, you pop in, you can't read the entire article because they need you to subscribe for a certain fee per year. And a lot of times online, I feel like reading the news online is just not so good because they'll give you these, these fear invoking and uncertainty invoking titles and yet they don't even offer you a full explanation and there's a bunch of loopholes that's the biggest thing is loopholes uncertainties it's like we read the title we get concerned then we um we don't know the rest they like don't fill the rest for us and and i feel like a lot of where we like live through and and a lot of the things around us they have these uncertainties you know uh, and we fill our, our day with uncertainties too. You know, we've got that, mm, the, the lab results from the doctor that we're waiting on or whatever, you know. At the same time, you're, you're just, you know, you've got another appointment that you don't know is going to pan out. And then you have a package that you're waiting for. You're not sure if it's going to arrive. You're not sure if the mailman's going to leave it at your porch. You're not sure if there's going to be somebody that's going to be able to pick it up. You're not sure that maybe while it's sitting there on the porch, somebody might steal it or whatever, you know, you've got all these uncertainties and your brain is like, okay, you know, one hour at a time, we're gonna get through this day. But as you can see, your brain is surrounded by these sort of uncertainties everywhere. And they can create a lot of worry in our day. They can create a lot of uh, sort of in internal worry that we, we it's normal to us because that's how we live but but the importance of of this video i feel like and hopefully may be helpful to some is just starting off and recognizing that those things may not necessarily be the the most important like a more beneficial approach so how do we deal with this well hopefully uh with what i'm about to say next may be of greater benefit to some people if we start thinking about the world differently and if we start to put emphasis greater emphasis on activities that create mindfulness okay let me just give you an example let's say let's say that you're going to the park with your kid okay um, you're going with your family your guys are walking on some kind of a hike or something and then your 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 child is like going at your your you know trying tugging on your shorts and he's saying like daddy daddy look i found this cool bug i found this cool bug in the meantime you're checking your phone and you're getting an email from your boss or whatever that tells you that you need to have those papers completed by i don't know tonight or tomorrow and so you're reading and you're like why is my boss so so uh, worried or whatever your son is like tugging and you're like hey, honey come on can you please like I just, daddy needs to read this email real quick. Can you please, can we just walk? Are you hungry? Do you need a, do you need a snack? I mean, like, come on, can we just, can we just move on? No, no, that's the prime time right there. We miss them. They're always presented to us. Everywhere we, we go, everywhere we live, we have these overabundance of these gold mines. This is, this is, it's worth, it's weight in gold it's it's so like valuable right there you the, the the key is recognizing these things is your son is saying hey look there's a bug put your phone in your pocket and say this is the moment 
that will be imprinted in his memory if it's well executed. This is the moment that may shape his <clears throat> upbringing and, and may even make him decide to, I don't know, go to an e e ecology or become a botanist or, or something. You turn around, you get on your knee and you say, you're right, son, that's a really cool bug. Let's look at it together. And you take that time and you take that, that moment and you, 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 you allow to have an uninterrupted, I don't know, a minute, two minutes. I mean, how long is it going to take? You're not going to be sitting in front of that bug for, for 30 minutes. But that is prime time right there for, for your son, for yourself, for the memories that you guys are creating within that minute. It's, it's, it's so, so valuable. That's a valuable time. Another example for, for, for me, um, um, I, we live in the house now, so I have to do uh, lawn, lawn, lawn care. I have, to, I have to mow the lawn every week. So you can look at it as a chore. Oh my God, I, have to, I can't watch my show or whatever. I can't do this. I have to get up in the middle of a hot day and I have to, I have to go and I have to uh, mow the lawn. But if you don't think about it that way, if you think about it, hey, like, this is an opportunity for me to get away and have some downtime, even though it's not downtime, even though you're, you're mowing the lawn, you're physically exerting yourself, it's downtime. Because you're, you're walking and you're in the moment. Hopefully you're in the moment as much as you can. And you're taking in the, 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 the sounds of the birds and you're taking in all the stimuli that you can. And the more that you take in, the more present in the moment you're going to be and the more you're going to take away from that. The amount of time that you're putting in versus what you're getting back, it's kind of like going back to the, the diet, the, the diet thing, the calories going in versus what you're getting out. It doesn't matter how much time you're mowing the lawn. What's important is how in the moment, how mindful were you while you were doing that. Plus, it allows you to like, for example, my neighbor, he mows his lawn with headphones. And I was like, that's not a bad idea. I can listen to music while, or whatever. You may listen to audiobooks tried listening to music, it was distracting. I had so many thoughts in my head and I couldn't concentrate on the music and it felt like I was trying to divide my attention into way too many stimuli. So I took the headphones out and I thought, this is crap, I don't need headphones. And some people might disagree, some people might, might want headphones. I used to drive to work, it was like an hour and a half each way. For, and I did that for like three and a half years. Four days a week. And so I used to listen to music. I used to listen to audiobooks, podcasts. I mean, you name it. Find a way to fill my time in. And then I realized after a while that all everything I've listened to is useless. It's not like I really gain anything. And I started driving in silence. I even, um, I don't know, I, I, my little dashboard, I can't even open the little latch to, to open my audio system anymore. And I don't care. I, I think that the last time I actually listened to music while I was driving might have been like four years ago. My wife is like, how can you drive in silence? I'm like, it's a downtime for me. I can think about some of the thoughts I might have. I can, I can concentrate on the road. And why fill your time with so much stimuli? Why fill your brain with so many things at once? Like that's not a... It's not showing that your brain is so capable of doing. I mean, like the corporate, corporate businesses out there, they will, they will uh, applause you for, for being a multitasking master, where in reality, that's just not the case. Let me give you guys another example. I mean, um, we have a routine at night. We, we do dinner, bath, brush teeth, go to the restroom uh, for the kids, and then go to sleep. And that routine usually takes a couple of hours. And sometimes I'm the defector, so I'll get away from the routine and do something. And, and sometimes I remember I would go up and my, my daughter might be in her room and my, my wife, she's like, where is she? Where is she? She needs to eat her food or whatever. She needs to get in the bath. She needs to do this. We, we got to go, 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 you know. And, and so I remember it was one time I got into the room. The room was dark and I was like, Mila, where are you? So uh, she was... She was like playing in her tent by herself. So I closed the door behind me and I walked in and I recognized, I thought, instead of telling her, honey, come on, we got to go eat, whatever, you know, we got to do this. 
What I did instead is I just came up quietly and I said, hey, what you doing here? You know, and I sat down and I, she was like, you know, she was really quiet. And, and I said, can I, can I climb in the tent with you? I see you got some friends of yours, you know, Mr. Fluffy over here is talking to Cinderella or whatever. And we sat there for probably, I don't know, a whole hour. And, and that was like the, one of the better memories that I have for a long time. It was such a, such a in the moment type of a memory that, like I said, I mean, no amount of money can replace that. No amount of other things could replace that. It's these, this sort of a, such a enriched moment. So we sat there and, you know, Mr. Fluffy got his whistle and Cinderella got a bunch of stuff and there's a whole story and it was just so wonderful. Uh, so wonderful to be in that moment with her. So whether it is for yourself or for the people around you, my if, if you take away anything from this video, take away that you need to try to seek out around you these moments that allow you to be present, that allow you to be present with yourself or you're allow you to be present with the people around you and say, and put a value system. When chess players put a value system on their pieces, why not put a value system on your time? You say, that is worth more with my time right now than this. You know, what's the value of me sitting there and not doing anything and watching TV? Like, what am I getting away from that? Versus the value of me um, spending that time doing something else. I, I try to exercise every day. I have a rowing machine in my basement, um, the Concept 2 Model D. I've really wanted to have a rowing machine for the longest time. And I've rowed on that rowing machine for, for, for many, many miles. Now I've had it for probably half a year. But what I notice is I put the rowing machine next to a big screen TV. And sometimes when I row, well, a lot of times, in fact, I'll put on some kind of a show or some kind of a movie. So that way, uh, you know, I'm rowing and I, um, I'm watching something. But sometimes I don't. And sometimes when I don't, I don't turn on anything. I turn off all the lights and it's completely quiet in the basement and I row. And so it is during those times when I don't turn on the TV and everything's quiet in the basement and I just row is the best time that I like that the best takeaway that I get from rowing because I can close my eyes and I usually I imagine myself how the like the Greeks and the Romans and the Scandinavians and whatnot, the Vikings back in the day, I try to envision that I'm on this big boat with a bunch of other people rowing and we have a person in the front doing the drums to set the rhythm and we're crossing some kind of an ocean. And I close my eyes while rowing and I can imagine that to me and how of an enriching moment that is for me to row to imagine that the other day I, I i did the same thing and i imagined myself rowing somewhere in the jungle on this like really small river somewhere in the amazon and and the emotional the emotional response that you can get from just being in the moment and doing that while you're rowing is is so enriching and so much more powerful than anything that you can get from just watching tv I'm going to try not to bore you with all these examples, although it is these examples that I feel like help me bring home exactly what I'm trying to tell you guys. But um, last one would be, uh, for example, I live in the city. I've always lived in the city. I, I, I've never been on a campfire uh, with like a tent and an overnight sleepover somewhere. I've hiked a couple of uh, you know trails, but that's about it. So, But I know a lot of people out there that they love hiking, they love uh, campfire. Even my best friend, he, he loves going out and, and doing that sort of thing. And if, if somebody ever ever told me like, uh, doing a campfire with a tent is really nice. I can't, I can't relate because I've never actually done it. So I can't be like, mm, what's it like? What's it like to be sitting in the middle of the night or in the evening by the campfire and uh, you know, just sit there and enjoy the campfire. What What is it like? In our backyard, now that we have a house, we have a tiny little um, sort of enclosure where, where you can burn some wood. Um, and from time to time, I'll get a bunch of wood in there and I'll I'll start it up at night. And I'll just sit there and I'll, I'll, I'll burn the fire. 
Well, I sat a chair the other day and I sat down right next to it and it was nice. The stars overhead, it was a little bit chilly, but this was a couple of months ago. It's a little chilly and I just sat there by the campfire and I looked at it and I took in as much as I could as far as like what it smelled like, what was the sounds. And then I closed my eyes and I put my, put my hands out in front of my face up to the campfire and I felt that um, the, the hands were really warm to the campfire closed my eyes and sat there for a second and I didn't just I was just taking it in I was taking in the moment because once I took in the moment what's once my brain sort of analyzed then a, a person somewhere else across the entire globe somewhere in the Himalayas or somewhere in India or somewhere in England or wherever Australia when he's sitting by his campfire he felt the same stimuli. So I've enriched my experience, even though I may have not been to those countries, I've not been at a campfire in Himalayas, I now have experienced what it's like to be sitting next to a campfire. So if somebody asks me or says, you know, I've been to a campfire last night, I'll say I know how that feels because I've taken in those stimuli, I've taken in that moment. It has enriched my experience as a human being. And it only took me maybe half an hour, or not even, like the actual sitting there imagining that I could be anywhere in the world right now with my eyes closed. I could be sitting on top of Mount Everest at a campfire and I would be having the same type of a experience. And that took only about, you know, a fraction of the time and yet the, 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 the return on my investment of the time that I spend doing that is invaluable. It's, it's in, enriching. And that's why it's so important, like I said before in this video, to recognize what's important in our life and what's not. It's important to recognize moments where like if you're out on a field trip or if you're out taking your, your kids somewhere and your kids say, wow, daddy, wow, mommy, look at that. It's important to turn around and just have that click in your brain and say, this is your moment to shine. Get down on your knee and enjoy whatever that person is enjoying with them. Put your hand on their shoulder and just, just observe and, and try not to pass too many judgments and just, just be in the moment. You know, and that's just so important. I feel like so important for everybody to recognize. I took a, a physics class when I was younger in college and, and our physics professor told us from the book reading, and this may still hold true, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it still holds true, but the way that your brain works is that it operates um, on a daily basis, at least when we're awake, it op op operates <laughs> at... Um, roughly what would be an equivalent to 20 watts. So imagine a 20 watt light bulb and it's not super bright or whatever other appliance. My Mac mini operates at a 37 watts, so a little bit more. Um, but uh, that's how much power is usually allotted to your brain function. So if you're multitasking and if you're good at multitasking, you don't get extra wattage. You, uh, well, it's just an equivalent, but you don't get to operate at what it would be an equivalent to 40 watts just because you're doing many things. You're just splitting those 20 watts onto uh, a greater amount of things, but each one of the things that you're doing ends up being you know, split, and it's not as, as good. Um, so, so that kind of, you know, might be the way that you've done things from uh, up to this point, but it, it's not the right approach. I feel like it's just, it's, it, it could be improved by saying, hey, I've got these 20 watts. I got these $20 to spend or whatever. I want to be able to have a, not a shotgun approach to my day. I want to have a sniper rifle approach to my day. You know what I mean? I want to be in the moment. I want to go get my cup of coffee. I'm not going to be checking Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or whatever while my coffee is brewing. I'm going to stand there and I'm going to get my coffee and I'm going to look at it brew and I might go to the refrigerator and get some creamer. And then I'll pour the creamer and I'll pour just the right amount because I'm not distracted. And then I'll sit down and I'll close my eyes and I'll enjoy that first sip of coffee and that'll be 
so much gratifying for me because I'm doing things mindfully. I'm gonna leave you guys as a conclusion by one advice is if you don't change the way that you live your life, at least try to adopt healthy mind mindful hobbies, okay? Mindful hobbies like weaving, painting, um, things that you can do, or chess, for example, things that you can do that you get into and they're like a restart to your day. Essentially, if you do something and you get out of it and you say, what, how much time have I been doing this? That is a great, no, you've only been doing it for one hour, but you've completely lost the track of time because you were so engrossed in it. Once again, those are, Mahabis will allow you to have a consistent way of being mindful throughout the day and that will really help once again to you know uh, have a better mental health um, and because this is a chess channel of course I would recommend that chess like many other hobbies is a great way to to be mindful because chess is something where you're getting into it you cannot be thinking about other things while you're playing chess it's just not possible i mean you could and i've mentioned this before in some of my other videos but you really can't if you want to get good at chess or if you want to actually play the game the way it's designed to play you have to be in the game that means you have to completely chop off all the other worries you've had previously before you got to playing the game and you have to just sink in dive in and be in the moment. That's the only way that, that chess works effectively. So chess is because like we have so many other, once again, competitive things in the world. We have entertainment, we have video games, we have, we have so many things that we, we get to choose from how to occupy our time. Chess is just not on the top of our list. It may have been like in the 17th century when there was not a whole lot to do and people play chess but now it's like we live in a world and we have to recognize that we live in a world that's filled with distractions and these distractions may seem like the right thing to do at the time but we have to understand once again if we put in our time what are we getting in return you know i've played video games before when i was younger you put in your time oh you put in a lot of time and yes you do stay focused on the actual game but what are you getting in return you could argue and say well I, I play video games it improves my reaction speed improves my ability to predict things it improves my you know judgment or whatever but it only works to an extent it's not it's kind of superficial when you're playing video games you might get better at playing video games but it's still kind of superficial speaking of video games there was a video game when I was younger it was called Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden is uh, an older game for the Xbox. It was really well crafted. It's about a character, some kind of a Japanese character that runs around and uh, destroys all these enemies with a, a sword or he ends up, you know, as you move through the game, you uh, gain a certain amount of experience points as you, you know, basically how many other games are. And then you, you get the opportunity to, to upgrade your weapon. Okay, so you have the sword you start out with and then you can upgrade and I think you can upgrade a total of three times, three, maybe four, I don't remember. But every time you upgrade, you can't get back the upgrade, you can't unupgrade. So once you spend those experience points, the time you spend, you know, uh, progressing through the game, uh, that's it, they're locked in. So, so as you progress through the game, you encounter other weapons. Some weapons are stronger, some weapons are just different. You, I think you encounter like a bigger weapons. And so you realize, okay, as I'm getting all these weapons, now my experience points, you, you, you have to start deciding like, my future experience points, am I going to continue upgrading the very first weapon that I had and get it to like its maximum abilities or you know strength, or do I now put in those experience points into something else? Uh, I'm, I'm going with this, I'm not going off on tangent, but I just wanted to, to kind of bring home the main idea about chess and here's the thing at some point i think midway through the game you find a stick and the stick is just like doesn't do any damage any realistic damage at all and and you're thinking like okay i found the stick what why why do i even need a stick okay 
you don't really do a whole lot of damage. You, 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 there's no reason to use this stick, and it's really hard to 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 maneuver with it. And like, why? Why even? Add, but here's the thing about the stick. This stick, unlike the other weapons, like most of the other weapons, will have like maximum of five upgrade slots. Some of them only have three. Um, three. <laughs> and the stick has ten. Okay, five and five, ten. Um, upgrade slots. So you're thinking, holy crap, you know, the stick is really, really weak. And it has 10 upgrade slots for me to upgrade the stick to get it better. And what people, most people, they, they just discard a stick and like, I'm just not, I'm not going to fight with the stick. I'm not going to spend my, uh, you know, upgrade points upgrading this stick. Like, why would I want to do that? I've got all these better weapons. But here's the thing. If you start upgrading the stick and you get to about upgrade level five, you start to slowly realize that the stick allows you to be able to maneuver around your enemies a lot better than most of your other weapons. And in fact, by level five, you start to slowly recognize that I think that it might have been worth doing all the upgrades that I've been doing because it's starting to seem like the stick might potentially be a better choice okay and then by the time you get to like level seven that becomes a little bit more obvious and by the time you upgrade it completely you start to recognize wow it was worth it it was worth my time to upgrade the stick the same goes for chess if you think about it to somebody who's a newcomer to chess who's a beginner there's so many other things out there you know tv video games so I mean, you name it that can can preoccupy your mind and allow you to get a much better entertainment, you know, quality experience or whatever from the get-go, you know, from level one. You don't have to be an expert movie critic or whatever to enjoy a great movie. You don't have to have even seen other movies before or have any background to enjoy a great movie. You just sit down, you press play and you go or you go to the movies. Chess is different, you know, chess is like... If you're new to chess, you sit down and you're like, wow, I, I just got interrupted from playing this really awesome video game to do this. And, you know, and a lot of times chess, unless you're playing online, you have to have another opponent. Once again, like you have to find somebody who's going to be playing you. And like, it's not that entertaining. Let's face it. It's not that entertaining, especially to a very beginner. It requires a certain type of skill and the patience to try to learn the game and try to improve at the game. And that's why so many people don't play chess because yeah, so many people know how to move the pieces, but when it comes to choosing what they wanna do with their free time, chess is not really on the very top of the list. And, and that kind of goes to show you that chess can be, um, can be seen just like that stick in the video game. At level one, you're not really getting a whole lot in return. And so it's not until you actually get relatively good at chess when you start to recognize that, like when you get up in the morning and you have free time for one reason or another, you woke up on a weekend or something and somebody said, congratulations, today is your birthday. You're going to get, you know, three hours to do whatever you want to do, which usually doesn't really happen to me all that often. But what do you want to do with your free time? And then when it gets to the point where you sit down and you say, my free time on a Friday night, I genuinely want to just play some chess games. That's when you're starting to recognize that you're getting back from the chess games a lot more than you might be getting from movies because movies, you still get back entertainment or whatever, and that's great. But from a game of chess, when you're getting to a you know, more advanced level, you're getting back so much more on such a deeper level. And that's how hobbies tend to be because we get better at hobbies and we gain back so much more. So the level of, of depth that we can get things out starts to get deeper and deeper. And then everything else seems so superficial and shallow that that is why I feel like it makes sense to have a hobby and that is why I think it makes sense to put in consistently time into your hobby to get better, whether it's chess, whether it's art, whether it's painting, weaving, uh, what, what have you. 
it's it's always important to to be consistent with it and to you know recognize that that it's it's kind of like an investment you invest into your time you invest into this hobby and eventually you're going to get to that stick that's upgraded to level seven or whatever and you're going to say i'm really thankful that i have stuck around and been patient and done this long enough to now be genuinely interested and i'm getting back so much more okay so anyways that's pretty much <clears throat> Long story short, all I really wanted to talk to you guys about, and this is just the way that I make my videos. And for those of you guys who've stuck around all the way to this point, congratulations and thank you so much. If you've stuck around to this point and you watched the entire video, be sure to hit that like button so that other people could maybe benefit from this information. Like I said, that is not really all that new in the first place. Um, I'm going to leave uh, this video with something chess related. Um, some people have been asking me recently about Royal Chess Mall and whether or not I've done any more reviews or planning to do any more reviews from Royal Chess Mall. Um, I've done the, the video to the, the, the coffer box that holds my cook chess set. And I, um, I think that box is really awesome. It's a great quality box and it was worth the money that I put in. I think it was like 170 or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But um, I'm going to hopefully be getting some more chess sets from Royal Chess Mall here soon. Um, so if you guys are excited about that, hopefully as excited as I am, then be sure to stick around hopefully within the next couple of weeks. I've ordered some chess sets and I, like I said, will be doing some reviews of some really awesome like luxury chess sets, not like the plastic stuff, but like really good stuff. So be sure to stick around and uh, comment if you have anything to say about this video or anything to share about how you find uh, mindfulness in your days, about how you try to stay active, play games or what, what your approach is to keeping a healthy mind uh, and a healthy life overall. And uh, be sure to stay safe, stay happy, play some games, think about what I've said, and I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.